live, everybody. We are here at Junction Bar and Grill, as we are each and every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m., soon to be coming to Sports Talk 790 and iHeartRadio, January 12th. Um, well, hey, we're going to get right into the NBA talk right now because we got our man on the scene, Soccer Talk Luis. We might have to call him Hoops Talk Luis tonight because he is at the Rockets game, Rockets versus Spurs. What's up, Luis? How are you? <laughs> well, hey, why don't you clarify for everybody out there listening live around the world? Who's your team, Luis? Oh, okay. Well, hey, I'm sorry that they're not taking care of business tonight, and the Rockets have a 20 point leave at halftime, but we wanted to check in with you. How do we sound right now, live on the air? Good. Man, so do you. It's like you're sitting right next to me. Hey, how old does Tim Duncan look tonight? 54 or 58? <laughs> Tim Duncan is uh, going pretty good. He has, uh, <laughs> he has three points right now. Oh, I'm not sure, but he looks pretty good. The whole team, we just like, the whole is not doing good right now. But uh, I think he was saying a wonderful game tonight, and that's what he told us. Ex San Antonio Spur. Absolutely. You know, we could have sent him away. Go ahead, Luis. You know, we could have sent him away in that trade. What do you think about that trade that could have happened? Trade? Well, the trade where we could have sent him to New Orleans, you know, when we could have got uh, Gasol. Would you rather have Gasol or would you rather have the way Scola is tonight? We do have one team but I have no yeah, I agree with you. You know, I call uh, Paul Gasol Captain Flopper, so I'll take Luis Scola all day long, the hardest working man in basketball right there. Well, hey, hey, we, we want you to enjoy yourself. Look, Luis, we want you to enjoy. All right, well, hey, you never know. The Rockets are notorious for giving up a lead in the second half. Uh, that's kind of what they did. They weren't up 20 on Orlando the other night, but, you know, they – they kind of let that lead slip away uh, towards the end of the game. So we'll see what happens, man. Have fun with your son. Tell him we said happy birthday from everybody here at Sports Rap Live. I will. You never know. I'm talking about the makers. You never know. But they'll find the pocket. You never know. That's right, man. You never know where the soccer talker is going to be. Hey, I just can't wait till we send you over to that brand new stadium to cover these soccer games live and direct right here on Sports Rap Live. Yes, sir. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, hey, enjoy yourself, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. See you next week. Happy New Year. Hey, everybody here in the lounge can hear you. Want to say something, everybody? Yeah, that's all, buddy. Yeah, all right, good yeah, night. Good night. <laughs> all right, well, hey, you know what? This is an old Southwest Division matchup tonight. Spurs Rock has been going at it for years since Dream was dominating uh, David Robinson, and uh, I'm glad he could be out there tonight. It is his son's 10th birthday. Um, you know, I kind of expected – maybe a sub 500 season for the Rockets but if they don't get bigger faster and get Kevin Martin into the offense they're gonna be in big trouble well this team is exactly where you don't want to be in the NBA they're 500 you either want to be bad and start tanking you know to try right. and get the reclamation project started or good. And, and get the you know the draft pieces you know the draft picks or you want to be really good you know you either want one or the other either you want to be building it up or tearing it down and right now without that trade you know we were talking about for Gasol they're in they're in no man's land and you hate to be there I mean you really can't say anymore the you know more we trust because I mean this has been a rebuilding project since pretty much when Yao went down and team was done. I mean, we've been in that holding pattern. It's like we're circling the, the, the tarmac trying to figure out when we're going to land this thing and finally get it right, but we can't. That's right. Get it right. That was our saying in Yeah, I mean, they really haven't yet. I mean, it's still kind of a holding pattern. Well, and this is the only guy that I know in Houston for the last two years since we've been on the air has really questioned Daryl Morey and where he's where he's really going as a general manager and what he's going to do with this team. I mean, Gons, you, you call it like you see it, right? Yeah, always. And look where we're Mr. at. Mr. Chess Master. I also have to fault, you know, Vince McMahon Stern. If that trade had gone through like it was supposed to, we could have signed Gasol and had Nene. Possibly. And that, and that would have been a really formidable front court. Instead, you ended up with uh, Samuel. Samuel Dallin Bear. Samuel, Samuel That's Song and Bird. bad. He's a piece. He's a piece, but he can't be our big man. I'm sorry. You don't win an NBA championship with that guy being probably your, what, third best player? Yeah. No, no, no. Definitely not. He's a piece. If he was a backup, he was like a... But uh, he's a, is he the third best player on the team? Right now, yeah. Yeah, you don't win a championship with a guy being that guy being your third best player. Well, you know what? You also don't... Oh, here he comes. Come on, Kadoma. 
You also don't win championships when your two star players who are very young in their early 20s start bickering with each other. And we called it last year in the playoffs. Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, they better get it right, man, because they really got into it. There was the rumblings of some thunder and lightning last night on that bench. I gotta, I gotta get in here and, and speak my piece on the Rockets. Please I think, do. I think uh, things worked out for the best. They probably got uh, the worst out of that uh, veto by Stern, simply because you got a brand new coach coming in. Uh, you have three key players that were going to be traded away. Now they're malcontent, kind of unsure if they want to listen to the new coach. But they were going to give up three key pieces to a division rival. For Paul Gasol, and I mean, you see what Skull is doing to the Spurs tonight. Imagine when he plays the the Rockets, uh, what he's going to do in that New Orleans Hornets so, uniform. I think that the stern veto really saved the Rockets. They wound up getting uh, Dallin Bear, and they didn't overpay for him. So, you know, not everyone can be an All Star, but you know, they got that piece they were looking for. Everyone was saying you don't need a C to spell Rockets. Uh, you know, uh, but they wound up getting one anyway. They didn't overpay, so I think they're going to be all right. And you see uh, the no uh, training camp and a shortened season. It's really favoring the young athletic teams. Uh, we see teams like the Celtics getting off to a slow start. The older the guys, Lakers. yeah, Lakers. The older guys are taking a little bit longer to warm up, while the younger guys are running and gunning already. So that's Bud takes off his jacket. Yeah, but it's it's similar. It's similar to what happened in the NFL. I mean, we saw a lot of uh, you know young teams get off to a fast start, and the, a lot the of Bills. The, and a lot of the older teams uh, kind of took a while to rev up. But now that we're getting closer to playoffs, the cream rising. Oh uh, yeah, top. the cream's rising to the top, and I think the Rockets will do good. They may make the playoffs, but once they get there, you know they're going to be faced with that test. But uh, very that, similar to another team here like, from Houston. That's something I like to, to see playoffs. too much in sports right now. People are wanting uh, a ready-made uh, champion, and coaches don't want to develop talent or develop chemistry. And I think that's a lost art in sports right now. Very true, coaching-wise as well. They don't want to breed these coaches. Definitely, definitely. They want to get them in. If you're not winning, you're gone. On to the next. Well, let's talk about coaching. And if you're Scott Brooks and you're in Oklahoma City, and you've got, going back to last playoffs, Westbrook and KD really not clicking and actually rub the This is much to do about nothing. Uh, this really is much to do about nothing. When you look at it, I'd rather have two guys bickering at each other, showing that they actually care and are trying to figure it, figure it out, and you know, have growing pains like this, than have guys that just are kind of aloof and they're just like, well... You know, you didn't make the play, whatever. You know, I really don't care. I, I'd rather see them try and go back and forth and one of them trying to assert themselves to try and figure it out. And I think if they trade Westbrook, what's the, you're not going to get a player as good as him. You're not. You're really not. You're not going to get a guy with that kind of contract as good as he is on your team. Now, maybe he kind of meshes with, uh, doesn't mesh with what they're trying to do right now. But this is game. We're, we're, not, we're barely one week into the season. I know it's an issue from I last agree. season. I agree. But you have to let the, if at the end of this season it doesn't work, then I will say yes, Adam. They should get rid of him and try and figure something out. Well, you have it in your notes, too. He's not shooting. Shooting very well. Th that's one game. Yeah. He's not going to go over 13 uh, every other game of the season. He's just not. Well, let's, he's a much better player than that. Let's keep it in the uh, in, in this region and talk about the Mavericks, who are off to a terrible start. An another old team. Another getting old off team. To a another slow thing. Start. I, exactly. I'm totally not worried about this team at all. This is just a hangover. And once they get through this, it is, the, this whole schedule in the 66 game season is really going to hurt them because you know they're, they're a team that's kind of trying to get over that you know disease of me. Like we won it all last year. What are we yet to prove? Can we do it again? I don't think they're going to repeat. But I'm not worried about them making the playoffs. And it's like one of those San Antonio teams that, you know, it doesn't matter how they start, they're going to be there. And once they get there, it's going to be Dirk, and it's going to be the same old, you know, hat of him trying to be able to make that fadeaway shot that no one can defend. Well, let's get into, uh, before we go to break, let's get into the team that they faced who looks unstoppable through three games. And I know you say sample size, and, hey, we got to take it for what it is. But the Heat... Look mighty good, and they might have found somebody to run that point for the next five, six, seven years at Norris Cole. You seen this guy, Kanoa? This yeah, Norris Cole I've kid? Seen Norris him, Ice I mean, Cole. I mean, playing with, playing with those guys is going to make anyone look good. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think let's But there's give one up. thing to look good, there's another thing to have 14 points but, in your second NBA game in the fourth, fourth quarter. Let's, let's give him some time for those other teams to get some tape on him, and we'll see if he can continue that trend. 
My thing so is, is it sample isn't, size. I think it's great say. that he's doing so well. That's a really uh, improved point that they can get, and they didn't really have to pay a lot to get the guy. They drafted him. My whole issue, though, is the same issue it's always been with that team, is that if LeBron's on your team, he needs to show up in the fourth quarter. And once it, and it's, it really doesn't matter what they do in the regular season because they've done it all before. LeBron's done it all before. He's won the first place, you know, got the first round, by, you know, all the the easy seating and all that stuff. He's had the good matchups. It really isn't about that because we hold him, and that's kind of I think what the frustration with LeBron and this team is, is that we hold them to another standard. We hold them to a standard of that they're going to be about championships. They have to be like a contender. And I think it's great they're doing right now what they're doing in the Eastern Conference. But it doesn't matter. It really does not matter what they do right now. All that matters is developing Norris Cole and getting that team and getting LeBron over that mental hump. This regular season it doesn't mean anything to the Heat other than staying healthy. Right. Well, and making it to the finals last year as they did when everybody kind of counted them out after their rocky regular season, I think they're going to be back in the finals whether they win it or not. But the thing that really caught my eye in the other the other night's game uh, when, when Norris Cole had 14 points in the fourth quarter was the fact that LeBron James is deferring to a rookie in the fourth quarter to shoot the ball. That's the one thing that worries. The most thing impre the impressive part to me was the fact that when you I watched that Christmas Day game, when I saw LeBron take the ball onto the block and just start that dominating. That's what we've been saying is when is he still going to get guys and start posting them up? And it was not just him. That's, it was also Dwayne that, Wade. That's the big key right there is the post game. The only knock I have on that team just from watching them in these past you know three or four games is they have no half-court offense. They don't. At all. If you want to run with them, they'll the, run you out the gym. Because I didn't get the whole thing with the Celtics. Like they were actually playing pretty damn well when they were uh, in a doing, zone, in a, in a zone, yeah. and not being able to run ISOs or anything like that. They were just getting shut down, and they were going in droughts. And somehow this Heat team, they still haven't found. Yeah, it's great they have Norris Cole, but they still haven't found that outside shooter. Right. It's come and gone for them in the past. They've had you know one guy step up, maybe another guy, Capono, one year. Chalmers is looking horrific. He is. He's My looking very bad. Goodness. Well, that's Norris Cole's chance to shine. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you know, it's funny you say that, Gons, because that's been their Achilles' heel in the playoffs, and we all know in the playoffs that's what it comes down to. In that fourth quarter, is grinded out half court basketball. That's what's been winning championships. We saw it with Jason Terry last teams. year making those knockdown shots at the end of the game to put his team over the top, and then doing his little jet move. Woo! I want to yeah. touch real quick on the Lakers. Yeah, please. The Lakers. I, I think this team. I didn't get to say it last week. They have a lot of problems. A lot of problems. Soap uh, opera. I, I, I really don't God. see with the whole Continues. coaching change. I think this is going to be a really bad year for Kobe. I think with it's a bad year for the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, though, I don't think the Clippers are much better, though. If you watch Chauncey Billups, he is arguably the worst player in the NBA. Oh, wow. I mean, arguably really? the worst. Well, wow. he, he's getting up there. Give give Chauncey some time to warm up. But to me, this, this Laker team reminds me a lot of the Rudy T. Lakers. I mean, so, when I see Billups out there, yeah, though, it's kind it's of like... It's almost like deja vu. If Chris, yeah, if Chris Paul doesn't take over the and end Kobe of those games... Knows it too. Did you watch the Warriors game on was it Saturday, Sunday night? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if Chris Paul doesn't take over that game, they lose that game. That's true. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. Well, hey, we'll keep our eye on the NBA all season long. And like you said, man, it's going to be here before we know it. We'll be into the playoffs. And uh, as we say, time's up. But we did give ourselves some breathing room after the intro. We got Luis on the call. That sounded pretty good, right? Yeah, it sounded great. All right, so we'll be taking calls, of course, once we hit Sports Talk 790 in the new year. You guys look for that January 12th. Uh, we come back. You stick around the table? Yeah, sure. All right, we're going to open up the rap sheet, All talk right. some AFC first, and then we'll get into the NFC later. And then, of course, you're going to bring us Sneak of the Week number 125. All right. Coming up later on. And then the Sneak of the Year. Yeah. So you guys another, stick around. Another year, and we've been on point with those for the past couple of years. Man, I'll tell you what. So if we, have, if we had every one of those sneakers we've had on this table, we could retire in the game. Yeah, we could. Or if you had a pair of Concords, you could sell on eBay. Yeah. Pretty much. All right, we're going to break. When we come back, we're going to open up the rap sheet brought to you by New Era Caps. Shout out to Tattoo Drew in the building right now. We'll be right back here on Sports Rap Live. <laughs> 